Hello everyone, welcome to part 2 of How Does a Watchtower Make Jehovah's Witnesses Believe Lies? In this video, we're going to discuss whether Jehovah's Witnesses are followers of men or followers of God. You think not God's thoughts, but those of men. Has that ever happened to us? When is it particularly dangerous to do so? Well, the text for today is based on the events of Matthew chapter 16, verses 21 through 23. And let's read that together. Matthew 16, 21, from that time forward, Jesus began explaining to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised up. At this, Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Be kind to yourself, Lord. You will not have this happen to you at all. But turning his back, he said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me because you think not God's thoughts, but those of men. Now, Jesus here had just expressed real events that were going to take place. This is from that time forward, he began to explain them. From this account and parallel accounts, we see he began to talk about what was going to happen, where they were going to go, what would happen to him, perhaps even what was going to happen to the apostles. But what did Peter say? He, in effect, said, no, no, Jesus, no, no, you're wrong. Uh, You're not thinking right. You're overreacting. Nothing's going to happen. Now, while Peter uh, took the brunt of the council, the parallel account in Mark chapter 8 indicates that perhaps the other apostles thought the same way. See, they found it, what Jesus was saying, is hard to believe. Now, what was the problem? These were not wicked men. These were spiritual men. But the problem was that at that moment, they were using human reasoning, thoughts of men, rather than realizing that Jesus was expressing God's thoughts. Now, Jesus immediately corrected their thinking. See, at this crucial time, he needed Peter and the apostles, and not in front of him as a stumbling block, but behind him as willing supporters. At this time, Jesus needed support, not distractors. And the apostles obviously got the message, and there's no indication that Jesus ever had to counsel them like that again. In fact, in Luke chapter 22, verse 28, Jesus even commended them and said, you are the ones who have stuck with me in my trials. See, they learned a very valuable lesson. And what was that? That lesson was trust Jehovah and trust the channel that Jehovah is using. So did you see how they are saying Jesus was God's channel, therefore they are the Jesus of today? And if they do that, they would be thinking God's thoughts. So if Jehovah's Witnesses trust the channel and think like them, they will be thinking God's thoughts. And they also learned that it was imperative that they did so, especially as pressures mount as they got closer to the end of Jesus' ministry. Talks like this always worry me. They are always drilling it in the Jehovah's Witness minds that they must trust the channel because in the future something will happen and they must follow their direction. Well, how about us? How do we do? Do we think thoughts of men or do we think God's thoughts? Well, let's talk about that. Are they followers of men or followers of God? The March 15th, 1998 Watchtower makes this claim about the dangers of following men. It says, a strong leader-oriented relationship can lead to an unhealthy emotional and spiritual dependency. But with Jehovah's Witnesses, it's a strong organizational-based relationship that leads to an unhealthy emotional and spiritual dependency. As a matter of fact, Jehovah's Witnesses cannot fathom worshiping God aside from his earthly organization. So this makes it hard for Jehovah's Witnesses to leave because they can't think of another acceptable way to worship God. The article goes on to say, Some may have been told that the Witnesses belong to a religious organization that enslaves its members, exercises authoritarian control over them, unduly restricts their freedom, and throws them out of step with society as a whole. 
Jehovah's Witnesses know that these concerns are unwarranted. Therefore, they invite you to check for yourself. After careful consideration, draw your own conclusions. Are the witnesses servants of God as they claim, or actually slaves of men? But we can answer that question, and the rest of the world can answer that question. The witnesses are actually slaves of men. They are slaves of the governing body. But the Jehovah's Witnesses cannot see this. To them, they are not slaves of men. But the governing body's statements prove otherwise that the rank-and-file Jehovah's Witnesses are indeed slaves of men. Some examples of this are, for one, the Walsh trials. I've been reading the Walsh trials for a friend of mine to find a quote in there, but while reading it, it is pretty amazing that they say that the officials demand unity of belief at all costs. And every one of Jehovah's Witnesses must accept the false teachings and false prophecies or else be disfellowshipped. A second example of this is from the April 1st, 1986 question from readers in the Watchtower. It says, Why have Jehovah's Witnesses disfellowshipped for apostasy some who still profess belief in God, the Bible, and Jesus Christ? This whole article is amazing. It's them defending why they disfellowship people who believe in the Bible. Because according to the Bible, an apostate would be the Antichrist, one who teaches something other than what the Christ did. Yet strangely in this article, they keep comparing themselves to the Catholic Church by saying that the Catholics have different views, so why don't we? But that's not at all the question that was asked. As you see here, they say, obviously, a basis for approved fellowship with Jehovah's Witnesses cannot rest merely on a belief in God, in the Bible, in Jesus Christ, and so forth. And they compare themselves to the Catholics again. The Roman Catholic Pope, and go on about the Catholics. But interesting remark they said there, to be a Jehovah's Witness, you cannot just believe in God, the Bible, and Jesus. It says, approved association with Jehovah's Witnesses requires accepting the entire range of the true teachings of the Bible, including those scriptural beliefs that are unique to Jehovah's Witnesses. And then it says, what do such beliefs include? It goes on saying, the 144,000 go to heaven, that Jesus came in 1914. And one more thing that there is a faithful and discreet slave upon earth today entrusted with all of Jesus' earthly interests, which slave is associated with the governing body of Jehovah's Witnesses. So, of course, they're saying the governing body is God's channel, and the Jehovah's Witnesses must accept the true teachings of the governing body or be disfellowshipped. Whether these teachings are correct or, un or not correct, they must accept them or face being disfellowshipped. Even if these teachings change later, do you think the elders go and hunt out the people that they disfellowship for apostasy? Of course not. They do not do that. Those people who may be questioned a teaching which later got changed with new light and they got disfellowshipped for apostasy, stay disfellowshipped for apostasy. Now, does that sound right to any of you? No. This is just one of many of the beliefs of the Jehovah's Witnesses that is in error that shows that these are man's teachings and not God's, because we can see from this that it is men who are forcing these people to, you are going to believe what I teach at this time, and if you don't believe it, then you're going to be thrown out. If I later change my belief so well, it doesn't matter. You have to believe what I believe right now. They don't care about if it's true or not. If that's their belief at the time, the Jehovah's Witness must believe it. Also, I found it interesting that they included the scripture of how if an angel gives you this teaching not to listen because they will be accursed. And they mention how this was said twice because it was so important. Yet that is exactly what their, where their teachings come from. All the way back to Rutherford, he said that angels sent these things to his mind. 
and then Fran stating that the New World Translation was written by angels of different ranks controlling witnesses. So I laughed when I read that because it is a plain contradiction. How much more authoritarian can this religion and organization be? So whom have the Jehovah's Witnesses been following? In my last video, I received a comment saying that they believed the Jehovah's Witnesses because they were closer to the teachings of the Bible than any other Christian religion. And I said that you may need to do some more research on that because the Jehovah's Witnesses are nowhere near closer to the true teachings of the Bible. First of all, their Bible has been changed to go along with their beliefs. Wherever the Bible said something that disagreed with their doctrine, that verse was changed. The Jehovah's Witnesses deny this, but this fact can be easily proven with the Kingdom Interlinear Translation and reading the original Greek, then comparing it to the English that has been changed by human men. But also I asked if it was Jehovah who taught them lies, because the governing body and or presidents of the society in the past have taught Jehovah's Witnesses lies, and God doesn't lie. For example, the Jehovah's Witnesses believed from their inception that Jesus' second coming was in 1874. This fact is mentioned in the Proclaimer's book. It says that Nelson Barber convinced Charles Taze Russell that Jesus' second coming was in 1874. And then there's an asterisk, and if you go down to the bottom of the page, it says, A clearer understanding of biblical chronology was printed in 1943. So were the Jehovah's Witnesses believing that Jesus' second coming was in 1874 because that is what they read in the Bible, and that is what the Bible was teaching them? Or was it because the Watchtower's president changed the teaching in 1943? And then the Jehovah's Witnesses were allowed to put their faith and belief in the teaching that Jesus didn't return in 1874, but that he returned in 1914. So clearly we know the answer to that. When the society happens to be teaching something that is actually true from the Bible, this is not necessarily why the Jehovah's Witnesses believe it. The Jehovah's Witnesses believe a teaching because that is what God's organization is teaching, not because that is what the Bible says. And if you ask the Jehovah's Witnesses individually about this, they will deny it. They can't see the fact that they believe in what the governing body teaches them to believe, and not because that is what the Bible teaches them to believe. In the March 15, 1998 Watchtower, on page 19, it says this, Jehovah's Witnesses try to be careful about how they express themselves. Instead of saying, the society teaches, many witnesses prefer to use such expressions as, the Bible says, or I understand the Bible to teach. In this way, they emphasize the personal decision that each witness has made in accepting Bible teachings and also avoid giving the false impression that witnesses are somehow bound to the dictates of some religious sect. It is amazing to me how they speak to the Jehovah's Witnesses. Like here, they are telling them how they must speak to avoid people thinking that they are in a sect or a religious cult. You got problems when you must instruct your followers on how to speak about where their beliefs come from and basically instructing them to lie about it. Many Jehovah's Witnesses use that expression, the society, and it does sound very cultish and it gives an impression of elitism. But the reality is that it is the society's teachings that the Jehovah's Witnesses follow. So then, is it dangerous for Jehovah's Witnesses to study the Bible on their own? Well, notice what this watchtower says. It's the December 1st, 2001 watchtower, and it said, Private reading of the Bible is not enough. Jehovah uses his faithful and discreet slave to help you understand his word at the right time. And then the next year, in the December 1st, 2002 watchtower, 
they had an article on the Ethiopian eunuch and how he had converted to Judaism with the help of the Holy Spirit and Philip. And this article says, Our private reading of the Bible is not enough. Jehovah by His Spirit uses a faithful and discreet slave class to help us understand His Word at the right time. But the truth is that Jehovah's Witnesses are not allowed to understand anything in the Bible that is different from the way that they are taught to understand it. It is a requirement that every Jehovah's Witness understands and misunderstands the Bible as the way the governing body does. So the reality is you should study God's Word, the Bible, but just to make sure you don't understand anything in it, that it disagrees with the way we require you to understand it, even if you are right and we are wrong, you must listen and believe our interpretation or else. So who have the Jehovah's Witness followed? The illusion given is that they follow their leader, Jesus Christ. But the reality is, prior to 1976, they followed the presidents of the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society. And since then, they have followed the governing body.